In this video, I will be showcasing my two new Myrmica colonies for the first time on the channel, one of which is a super colony with eight queens in it. I will also provide tips and information on the species to help out anyone who is keeping or thinking about keeping the species. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Here is my first Myrmica colony that I will be showcasing today. This colony has one queen and around 30 or so workers. I have this first colony in a test tube attached to an Ants Australia Outworld. From my experience, these Outworlds are very reliable and include some important features like a slide off lid and a lip on the top of the Outworld allowing for a barrier to be placed underneath rather easily. Myrmica are not the best climbers that I've seen, but they can still get out of an Outworld if there is not a barrier on the lip. Fluon works really well for the species and can last quite a long time. There is also a connector attached to the test tube, leading into the outworld to make future nesting expansion a lot easier. Keeping a colony of Myrmica is something that I've wanted to do for quite a while, but I have never had the chance to until recently. I am not sure exactly what species of Myrmica this is, so if you have any idea, then please let me know in the comments. Some of the reasons that I've wanted to keep this species for a while, and why I think they are some of my favorite, is because they are quite active, decent size so you can easily see their activity, they have a singer instead of formic acid spray, and the queens are semi-claustral. This species may not be the best beginner species for the absolute beginners, because founding the queen can be more demanding due to them being semi-claustral. The founding process of the queens of most species that I own are fully claustral, meaning they do not require food to found their colonies. Semi-claustral means that the queen has to forage herself for food and bring it back to the eggs. So the difference is that you need to provide an outworld to feed slash clean up the garbage of the queen. This colony is also pretty active, with a lot of ants being outside of the nest at any given time foraging for food. Every week, I do maintenance on this colony by removing their garbage and refilling their water tower as needed. I filled the area of this outworld with dirt, but from the ants moving things around, it looks rather unsightly. And, with the color of the ants being so close to that of the substrate, I need to do something about it. So, here I'm putting some sand in the outworld to make it more aesthetically pleasing and to make the ants more visible as well as their garbage. Now, with those elements added, I think that this outworld looks much better. You can see the ants are freaking out over this new change to their environment. I think that Myrmica are some of the coolest and most unique ants that I own, with their attributes being different from a lot of other species that I own. I think that because of this disturbance to the colony's environment, that when I tried to feed them, they wanted no part of the food. Now let's get on to the colony's nest. I'm eager to show you what this colony looks like. Here you can see that this colony has a plethora of eggs and seems to be doing really well. I've noticed with both of my Myrmica colonies that whether they have one queen or eight, that the queens always lay a lot of eggs. This species is also very sensitive to light and freaks out quite a lot when they're being filmed. Like Formica, the queens from this species are very sensitive to light as I've said and react quickly to find somewhere that's dark and safe. When getting in closer on this colony, you can really appreciate the species colorings and their unique body shape. I've noticed that this colony prefers a moist environment and this test suit does the job perfectly with them being able to have a temperature gradient to choose from. They also really like the heat, which helps their brood grow faster, leading to better colony growth. It is also important for them to have a temperature gradient to choose from. What I do is I like to put a heating cable on the far end of the test tube. This way, they have the room to position themselves away or close to the heating cable. 
Now moving on to the anticipated second colony of the video. This is the colony that has eight queens. This colony is housed in a similar setup with a test tube and outworld from Tarheel Ants. This outworld has two openings, a small hole for feeding purposes and a lid that can be removed to get better access into the nest. In this outworld, I have a biformica liquid feeder full of sugar and a feeding dish I made out of a bottle cap. You can see this feeding dish in many of my old videos. It's gotten a lot of use over the years and it's a great way to make a custom feeding dish. There are two entrances to this outworld. One extra entrance for future expansion of the colony, which I believe to be imminent, and I'll tell you why. Lifting off this shirt, you can immediately see that this colony is special. This species is polygynous, which means they can house multiple queens together in a single nest. I created this eight queen colony as an experiment, and so far it seems to be a very big success. Just like the other colony though, this colony freaks out when exposed to light and they immediately start moving their brood to a darker place, away from where I'm shining light on them. The whole colony, including the queens, rush to the outworld temporarily, but if I keep the nest dark, they quickly start moving back as you'll see in a minute. I believe that when this colony gets bigger and into an actual formicarium that they will be less sensitive and more relaxed towards the light and I can film them better. For now though, I'm going to let them outgrow this test tube and update you all when they're ready to be moved into a formicarium. Although on the plus side, with this colony being so scared of light, it will be very easy to get them to move when the time comes. I expect to do this at the end of the year or early into the next ant season. Here's an example that as time passes, the queen slowly moved back to the nest. I followed this queen around until she got back into the nest and it took a few minutes. I hope that you all enjoyed this video and found this species to be as interesting and entertaining as I do. I also hope that the information given in this video can help you get started with your new Myrmica colony, or if you're planning on keeping them in the future. So if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments and I'll be happy to reply. Thank you all for watching and I will see all of you in my next video. Peace.